This video is a demonstration of one way that I show my students how they can make a picture using slabs, patterns, darts, and a hollow handle. Okay, so off camera I have already rolled this. Um, I've shown that in several different videos. If you need to see how to roll a slab of an even thickness, just check out one of my other slab videos. I always use hardwood slab sticks uh, with my students to help them get their slabs even. And then I'm ribbing the surface of the clay. I really like the mud tool ribs, um, the uh, links to these uh, sorts of things will be in the video description. Or you can just follow me on Amazon and check out my Amazon storefront because I have all these sorts of um, things that they sell on Amazon are uh, linked on my storefront. Now I'm just using a rectangular pattern to uh, cut this out. And I'm not using this whole thing. I'm just gonna use this as a guide for three sides and then I'm going to shorten it. So I'm really only going to have a slab about yay big. Um, I, w when I cut it out, I'll measure it because inevitably people always ask me what the measurements are. So I'll measure, I'll measure it even though I'm just kind of winging it here. Um, if I were making these teapots consistent, I would definitely use the same exact pattern from time to time. All right, slab is rolled, slab is ribbed. Now I am going to be using a rubber mat. So because I'm using something that is made of rubber and it's not porous, it could get stuck to the clay, I like to add a light dusting of cornstarch to it. Um, you could also put this, like if you had a, a sock or a piece of hosiery or something, you could put cornstarch in, in it and pounce it um, I just am using the brushes in the bowl because that's what I do with the kids at school. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and texture, see if there's one part I like better. Eh. I'm going to use kind of that middle section. Now, when I roll with a texture mat, I kind of roll from the center and go outward, trying to keep my pressure fairly even. Before I lift it completely, I'm gonna test it. I need to get a little bit more on there. It's not quite strong enough. And here I am just adding a little bit more weight to get that texture to come out more pronounced. When the texture looks good, I can take that off and then I'm going to use my pattern. Now, I know I want the diameter to be the diameter of that pattern, but I just want the height a little bit less. So you can see I'm cutting three sides at first and then I'm sliding the pattern up to just make it a little bit shorter. Again, I'll put the, um, the dimensions in the video description. I'm going to texture a little bit for the outside bottom. And I actually got lucky there because I realized as I was rolling it, I had forgotten to cornstarch that corner. And then the part that I'm gonna use for the uh, spout, I'm not going to texture. Um, on this one, I'm just gonna leave it plain so I don't have to worry about the, uh, the texture getting me messed up. Okay, here I'm going to put a bevel on both of these sides. Now, you could use the uh, be bevel cu uh, cutter. This again will be on my Amazon storefront or in the Google Doc. Um, this is a the, I, I think you pronounce it Sim bevel cutter. When you do this, you would cut one side and then you have to have a corresponding bevel of the exact same angle on the other end, so I will flip this over because it has to be the same angle. And then that goes, oops, that goes there. So the bevels will match. Now, obviously, I could have just cut it with a fettling knife if you hold the knife at the same angle. Um, and I am 
I'm a right-handed person, so when I cut a bevel, I always hold it in my right hand and the point is over to the left. So when I cut it like that, um, and then I would do this side with an undercut like, like that. Okay. I'll make a cylinder by scoring and slipping and pressing the seam together. You can see in greater detail on some of my um, beginning videos of how to put the seams together with the bevels, um, but you want to have a really great connection here. As I bring these two edges together, I want to show you that the bevels are going to overlap. So as I press it together, I'm pressing the bevel so it will overlap. And here my goal is to keep that form nice and round while I'm pushing together the seam. And then I'm going to blend the interior of the seam with the long handle of the wooden knife. Now notice I'm keeping my fingers on the outside of the seam as I'm blending it with the tool. You do want to add some support there so you're not going to damage the outside and blow it apart. So, in the case of this picture, I brought in the bottom a little bit with some darts, and I'm going to do that on here. Now, depending on what kind of dart shape you make, if you want it, if you want it to kind of round, you want it straight, or you want it to go in, like this dart goes in, you will have different dart shapes that you could use. I will do another video on darting that you can check out if you want to see, but here are a couple examples like a dart shape like this will give you an outer contour kind of like the handle the the cutout of the handles you can see it would be like this just elongated a dart shape like this will give you more of a rounded kind of belly, which is exactly what I'm going to do on this. Now, depending on how tall you want it, I've made a bunch of these darts in my classroom and um, I put little dots to help the kids indicate that it will uh, go level with the edge of the pot. Let me put this on a turntable. Okay, so the bottom is what I want to dart. And I'm going to do the first dart directly on the seam. I want it to be right on the seam. And depending on how tall of a dart you want, like do you want it to round quite a bit, you want it to round less, um, I'm going to put it on this, basically the top line. I think I'll go with the small dart. So as I'm looking at this, I think I just want a small dart which is pretty much the size that I had on the other picture. So I'm going to line up the dotted line with the bottom edge of the cylinder. And then I'm going to trace that onto it. Now, if I do corresponding marks up on top, I can then line up exactly opposite of it. Let me do it like this. So I'm looking and trying to get exactly opposite of this. You can lay something down to try to make a dividing line, okay? And then making sure it's straight. I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now you can do any number of darts. I'm gonna do four because I'll end up with a bottom that will be slightly more squared. Again, I like to put these lines up on top because I like to see exactly where this is happening. So if I do this, then I'm gonna have perpendicular to that. Okay, right? All right. Now I'm just looking from above. I'm trying to gauge this to make sure that it still looks uh, fairly even. 
Um, I'm just eyeballing it, but there are some tools that I'll show in another video of how you could um, get it a little bit more precise using some uh, neat little tools that are being made. Now, for creating the dart, I need to cut this clay at a bevel because when I put it together, just like the ends, a bevel is a little bit easier. So I'm gonna hold my knife at an angle. So if I show you this way, I'm gonna hold my knife at an angle to the edge, but I'm going to let the blade follow the line that I've drawn on the outside. So even though I'm curving it in the dart form, I also beveled it. So you can see that there's a bevel that, that will match. One thing I tell my students is if you don't have a, a pre-made dart that you've made, you could just make a dart, then use that and trace the, the clay dart on, on each of the uh, places that you want it. Okay, now I'm going to score the bevels, slip, and put it together. If you don't want it to be, say, squared, like I have it, uh, you could quite simply use dart darts that have less of an angle, like a skinnier dart, and use more of them. But I wanted to go ahead and kind of have a, a squared form. All right, now I'm going to just flip it. And again, this is able to hold itself so nicely because I did allow it to just stiffen up a little bit before I started to cut it out and texture it. Okay, so right now I have the uh, darts blended in the bottom, okay? And I'm ready to go ahead and put on a base. Now when you're doing a base, it is nice if you would like to use some of the textured clay, which I, I do enjoy using a little bit of textured clay. I'm going to set this on here, making sure that it looks nice and even. And you can see here I'm drawing reference lines slightly larger than the bottom of the pot so the base will extend out just a little bit. I often have students ask, should they be putting the base inside of the cylinder or underneath? And I will always say, put the cylinder on top. I think you're gonna have a much stronger uh, piece rather than trying to fit, you don't wanna fit the walls around that. So I've cut this a bit bigger, probably a quarter inch or just a little bit less than the bottom of the pitcher. Now to trim this out, I'm going to cut this at a bit of an angle, so I'll have a bit of an undercut. This is just one optional way that you can finish off attaching a slab. Again, check out some of my other videos. You can see other ways. There are tons of people that show great slab methods on uh, various videos. Okay, so if you can see, I've now angled these edges. Before I score this, I'm going to take this angle down just a smidge so when this sits on the bottom, it'll make a little bit closer contact. 
And once I have leveled that edge, I score generously, slip generously, rescore, and I also do the top edge of the base where it's going to sit on it. Because I know I'm going to be adding a coil on the inside, I do like to overscore a little bit. And with it scored and slipped, I will place that on lightly put it in place at first and then I will press it together. Now I'm going to take a little pony roller and kind of press this edge down where it's going to touch on the wall. I love my double pony roller but I don't think I have it here at school. I have it at home. Okay, now this little edge right here, I'm going to tidy that up just with my fingers being a little bit wet. And I'm going to press that up. And here the way that I clean that up is just dipping my finger in water and really compressing over that, kind of accenting that, that rim. I'm just going to take a peek on the inside and make sure that it still looks even. There's one spot where it looks like it bent in a little bit more. I just want to push that out. Now, adding a coil in there is an optional little extra that I often like to do. Some people don't bother, but I do like to roll one and get it down in there. small coil that I've scored and now I'll slip okay right now I have the coil laying in the bottom and then I'm going to blend it I like to use one of the Kemper tools that has a little rounded kind of hooked end. And I'm just going to continue blending the interior coil with the long handle of that Kemper tool and use whatever tool you like the best. Now I do have this sitting on a Kemper tilt and turn turntable, um, but I always like to put something down first to help keep the turntable a little cleaner, paper towel, piece of paper or something. Link for that is in the video description as well, in the Google Docs, I should say, and on my Amazon influencer storefront. Okay, I've blended that coil, but now I just need to smooth it. I like to smooth uh, with a paintbrush, uh, usually a stiff bristled paintbrush like I've shown in many of my other videos that will help smooth the coil and just get rid of tool marks that I might have down on the inside. Just really refining that and look for the details. You want to make everything look deliberate and intentional. Okay, so here's my seam over here on this side. I'm going to be putting the handle over here and the spout over here. But if I want to make a little bit more of a belly, I want to do that before I make the dart. So just like I've done in some of my cup videos, I'm going to stretch with my fingers, starting down low and pushing out to stretch and make a little bit more of a belly to the form. I'm stopping oh, about halfway because I want to accommodate for the dart and the spout. The clay is definitely still plastic, but it's on the slightly stiffer side of plastic. It is definitely not leather hard. I wouldn't do that with leather hard clay. All right, so it gave a little bit more of a belly to that form. Okay. Now I'm ready to go ahead and think about the dart back here. So as in this picture, I want to have a dart that is arched, okay? So it's gonna have two sides that are basically like this, but longer, okay? So I'll be taking a section out 
and I want to think about where do I want the handle to attach and that's pretty much where I want the top of my or the I should say the bottom of my dart to be so I'm going to use this little guy to start me off and again I'm doing it right on the seam I'm just going to be going pretty much straight once I have the dart established. All right, so if you can see that, I have my dart drawn. All right, same as before. I cut by keeping the knife on a bevel and let the knife blade follow the line that I drew. Same bevel and the knife blade is following the line. Okay, and that's my big thing. And obviously now you have to score and slip very well these bevels because you're making a new side seam. So as you push this together, it forms that contour, as you can see, forms that contour a nice curve in. And the bevels must overlap. And then I'm getting in there and blending the inside of the bevel. And I'm not 100% level right there, but I'll fix that. And then I'll work on the illusion of making sure that the edge is a nice even thickness, which it differed a little bit when I put that together. So I'm making sure that the inside of that entire seam has been nicely blended. All right, so the handle is corresponding to one of the darts, which means that the spout is going to correspond to the opposite dart. I have a spout pattern that my kids can use. This is pretty giant, so I'm not gonna use the whole thing. I'm gonna use the smaller dotted lines, but um, this kind of gives you a nice idea of how we can create this. I'm going to, first of all, Trace out the larger one. And then using the dotted lines as a guide, I have that as an approximation. All right. And I'm going to trim that out with a knife, the smaller one, of course. And I do want to take a moment to make sure it looks symmetrical, which I was a little off there. Okay, and the next thing that I want to do is I definitely want to thin this. This is way thicker than I need this spout to be. I want it to be thinned. I could use a small roller, or to make it a little faster, I'm going to use my larger roller. What I'm most interested in is thinning the upper edge because I really don't want it to be uh, super thick. I don't want it to be clunky in appearance. Okay, and where I just rolled it, I'm just going to recompress that. And I'm just wetting the edge before I go to bend it. So I don't need it quite that large. I'm going to trim some off from the bottom. All right, so now I'm going to kind of give me a rough outline of how I intend to put this on. I'm drawing these lines kind of up underneath so they shouldn't be visible. Okay, now that I have the outline there, now I'm going to just trim this away a bit and 
I'm definitely going to go smaller. So I'm going to take a section out where the spout will be covering it up. All right, so now I'm just going to take out an inner part because the spout's going to cover it up and I want it to have a little bit more flexibility in there. All right, now when I remove this, I like to kind of shave off some of this edge so it's not a really thick bevel. I mean, I like to kind of shave off some of this edge so it's not like a super thick area there. I want to ease that transition. So this will come in something, something like that. Okay, now I'm going to score. So I'm scoring both pieces. I'm going to go ahead and slip both pieces too because I really want to make sure it's making excellent contact. And the key thing here is really, really great contact. Make sure that it's slipped and scored very, very well. Truly compressed together, pushed together so you don't get any cracking. And in this next part, I'm really condensing uh, a lot of the time. Um, I'm just quickly showing how I blend, but of course I take quite a bit of time. I blend the two pieces of clay together. I make sure that the upper edge where the, uh, the spout meets the upper rim of the cylinder gets thoroughly blended there. Um, I use water on my fingers to smooth everything. Um, I'm going to go in there and tidy up with a paintbrush around the edges of the spout to make sure that it's really nicely firmly attached, no separation, no cracking, and uh, blended smoothly on the inside to get rid of the tool marks as well. Now that I have that firmly blended in there, now I want to think about um, making sure that the liquid can uh, really find its way up the spout and I like to kind of give it uh, a bit of a kind of a throat where it's it's going to naturally flow up and out the spout. I like to kind of pinch this in and make sure that this looks nice and round. I like to have it kind of it's co going to corral your liquid. So it's extending from down in the belly and it goes right up in that curve nicely. Now let's talk about a handle. I'm going to put this aside with some plastic over it while we work on a handle. My plan is I wanted to do somewhat of an angular handle, but I wanted to make it hollow. This is also a hollow handle. It is made from a slab. So I will do a similar technique, and I'm gonna use one of the slabs that I've already uh, cut, uh, that I've already rolled out earlier. I am going to roll this a wee bit thinner. And just like making a handle for, you know, a cup, I often tell people, make a few, you always have one that looks better. When I make a hollow handle, I usually have the ends flare out a little bit. And I will probably also make this a little bit skinnier than the pattern. I usually just approximate for my kids a slightly wider one that's than uh, than is necessary and then we can always trim it down it's hard to put more clay on it if you don't have enough but it's easy to trim it i am leaving this untextured 
just like the spout portion. All right, now I'm going to put a bevel on this and I am going to cut off probably another quarter of an inch here. Put an undercut bevel. And then I'm going to do a bevel on this side. All right, so I have both sides beveled. And now I'm going to score and slip and bend it around on itself. Bending it around on itself is the trick. So as I start to bend, again, I want this to be stiff enough that it's not going to just be complete plastic mess. But I want to think about making sure that I'm kind of coaxing the clay gently into the form that I need it to be. So as I bring this around, I'll probably have to re-score and re-slip because I'm touching that bevel so much that I'm kind of flattening out my scoring some. All right, now I'm going to bring these two together. And as I do this, I'm letting a little natural arch occur with this handle. And I'm gently pressing those bevels onto each other. And although this is dramatically sped up, take your time to make sure that that joint is connected well on the interior of that handle. Here's one advantage to not texturing the handle because I can do a little ribbing with it to really compress that seam. I do have another video where I show an overhead teapot handle, but this one is a little bit different. This is what I wanted to show as an example. So this is also a hollow handle, and this one I just took and I bent and I made a corner. That's what I'm gonna do on this picture as opposed to this one where I left it arched. See, I could just continue to arch that and have a nice arch with it, but I am instead going to try to give myself a nice little angle so before I do that though, I am going to do a little bit more ribbing right here on the inside of this handle. Okay, now my goal is I want it to come out and go down. I want it to connect here beneath the rim come out and I want it to come down here and connect on that point so I'm going to go ahead and fold this give myself more of an angle okay and just like any handle I do what I show in my other videos where I hold it behind it so like as you're looking at it there from the camera uh, it's behind it. I'm going to hold it behind it so I can see it better. I'm going to try something like this. So I have a little line on there to indicate the angle at which I want to try to cut it. Let's see how that looks. Okay, now as I look at it from up above, I need to make sure that this is not at a weird angle that I have cut it evenly. I do have tendency to cut it crooked, so I like to double check that. And in this bit, I'm going to speed this up. Um, I'm just trying to fit it on here, look at the relative size. At this point, it's still a little bit wider. It sticks out farther than I want it to, so I'm gonna shave off a little bit more and um, try it again. Again, I, I wanna make sure that it looks even, that it's not twisted. That's looking much better. I, I'm liking the size of that since it's a little bit smaller now. Now, I am going to flare out the ends, so I'm just taking my fingers and pulling out the ends. 
to give it a little bit of flare where it attaches. And then I'm going to score and slip again super vigorously um, and really press this on. Handle is the same moisture as the pitcher body that is essential for this. Um, and then, of course, cleaning, uh, blending, sealing, um, tidying with a brush. Alrighty, and now I have the handle attached. I am going to put a needle tool hole in it because I like to just be on the safe side. So it has a little vent. It helps it to dry a little bit better. Now on the rim, I'm going to soften this up with my fingers and a little bit of water, just like I do, say, a cup rim, just to make sure it has a nice, smooth, even appearance. And as you're finishing any piece, especially a nice piece like this, really take your time because it's all in the details. You want to make every choice deliberate and um, thoughtful. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this and learned a little bit more about how to make a slab pitcher.